So just let me know, guys, when I need to start, I guess. <clears throat> just hit me up in the chat and say, Ray, go. It's okay, Ray. I, I will do the introduction and then okay. you start from there. All right, well, it's 12.30. Welcome to uh, episode two of the Bite Size Science webinar series for 2022. We're very excited to be here today. Again, um, I'm gonna be hosting. My name is Victor Blanco. I'm the Taylor County Marine Extension Agent with Flores Sea Grant and UF IFAS Extension. And today we have um, a very interesting topic, which is a scalp seeder program. And we're gonna have a couple of, of peers from Seagran, uh, my uh, good friend, Ray Bot, Ray and Brittany Halfchar. So um, during the presentation, we're gonna keep all the microphones uh, off and cameras off. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the chat box. And after the presentation, the presenters will go through all your questions. Okay, so nothing else to add. So uh, Ray, take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. Uh, can you get to the second slide? All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for joining us today. I guess I could say good morning because if you're like me, you're in central time like that right now. So, um, so good afternoon and good morning. Uh, my name is Ray Baudry. I'm the County Extension Director over in Gulf County. I'm also the Sea Grant agent here. Um, Gulf County is home to St. Joseph Bay. Uh, so we're St. Joe Bay, uh, as the locals call it. Uh, one of the best uh, recreational scallop havens uh, in the uh, in Florida, I'd say. Um, so our recreational season is between August 16th and September 24th. Um, so please come visit us uh, during that time. I'm sure you'll have a good time out on the bay. Um, I'm also here, I guess, somewhat representing Franklin County and Bay County as their partners um, with our scallop sitter program. Uh, Franklin County's recreational scallop season starts July 1st, actually, so right around the count, uh, right around the corner, and it goes until September 24th. Um, there is no season in Bay County, though, at the moment, so, uh, but just wanted to get those plugs in, and um, I'll turn it over to Brittany for a slide. Thanks, Ray. So my name is Brittany Hall Sharp, and I am the Marine Agent down in Hernando County. So uh, more towards the southern end of the recreational scalloping area. I am home of the mermaids. Um, and our recreational scalloping season is from July 1st through September 24th. So today, uh, Ray and I are presenting on the scallop sitter program that we have um, in multiple counties throughout Florida. So you see denoted here by the arrows on your screen. Um, this is where Ray's programs are that he will be talking about in the panhandle. And I'm over here more in central Florida. Um, but essentially the goal of both of these programs is to increase depleted scallops that we have um, in our state waters off of Florida. And then also to reintroduce some scallops in areas that historically the scallops were uh, once present, but not right now, or maybe not in very high numbers. Um, and again, so this is in Bay, Gulf, Franklin, and Hernando counties um, that participate. In a few moments, Ray will go more into the biology of these bay scallops. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background, research shows that caging these scallops and these predator exclusion cages actually helps um, make sure that these scallops have successful fertilization. Um, so they have babies that will then be more successful into uh, developing into juveniles and so forth. All right, I'll give it back to Ray. All right, I think it's beneficial really to talk about a little bit of the background information here too about the Florida fisheries as it um, relates to bay scallops. Just wanted to share some of the historical information, you know, really to get us started. 
in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, you can see that the Bay Scallop once supported an important commercial fishery um, all the way from uh, Florida Bay to Pensacola. So from the Keys all the way around to the very tip of the Panhandle. Um, as you can see on your screen, the graph of uh, Bay Scallop fisheries shows the pounds of harvest on the Y axis there um, as the, uh, you see the year on the X axis. And, as you can see, the harvest began really to probably decline more so in the latter part of the 60s. And then unfortunately around 1994, the commercial industry uh, closed um, and hasn't reopened since. Um, so it's only recreational scalloping in the areas in Florida. So uh, what are some of these kind of possible uh, reasons of why there was a fishery collapse? Well. It uh, could be a combination really of a number of things. Um, habitat loss um, is probably one of the bigger ones because of land development issues. And that kind of leads into issues with water quality as well. Uh, management measures where overfishing probably was an issue um, as well as recruitment failure when, when you have new individuals of a generation um, that live through the spawn cycle, but very few of them are, are end up being mature enough to reproduce. Um, I think that was a little bit of an, ir, an, is, an issue as well. So you probably just had a, a wide variety of issues that, that came about that caused the decline. But um, the scallop sitter program seeks to you know, revitalize uh, these populations and areas. And who knows, maybe, just maybe one day, uh, the scallop sitter program may be the, you know, the catalyst that brings back a, a commercial season one day. Next slide, please. All right. So um, within Florida, again, we only have a recreational fishery that commercial fishery is closed. Um, and what you see here is a chart of the annual abundance survey. So typically um, in years past in about June, July, FWC, so the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, who is responsible for managing this fishery in Florida, um, they would do surveys and they would go essentially underwater, they count however many scallops are in the area, and then they give an estimate of how many scallops per 200 square meters um, are in this area. And they, they have it by county like you see here. Um, now they have shifted from doing this in uh, June timeframe to more of the fall timeframe to get a better handle on how many scallops um, are actually adding back to the uh, next year's population. They're getting a chance to reproduce. Um, but what you see here are those abundance surveys um, that they have done annually per county. And we're seeing like in Gulf and Franklin and Hernando counties in the most recent years, some lower numbers. Um, and so that is really helped drive this uh, scallop sitter program that we have in our counties. So uh, what is a bay scallop? So just to understand a little bit more about maybe scallop biology and the ecology behind things, and we're just gonna touch on a few points here, uh, not to go into um, great depth, but scallops are broadcast spawners. Um, that means they release sperm and eggs in the water column where the eggs can be then fertilized. In Florida, most, um, not all, but most spawning occurs during when there's cooler temperatures. So the fall, when temperatures drop a little bit, you're gonna have most likely your, your higher spawning activity. It takes about 36 hours for eggs to be fertilized and to develop into larvae. And this larvae really just kind of floats around the water column for 10 to 14 days. And then initially then develops into uh, what we call spat or really tiny, tiny juvenile scallops. Um, these scallops end up attaching to seagrass in most cases, which is a very important substrate. Um, it's a perfect environment for the scallop where it provides, it's an area that's gonna provide an abundance of oxygen, uh, it gives the scallop some cover as far as camouflage to try to evade any kind of predators. It's just a great habitat uh, for scallops. And then eventually the scallop uh, will 
grow large enough to be an adult and settle into the bottom uh, to live most of its life. Generally, most scallops will die after they spawn, but some are pretty resilient and will live somewhere between one to two years in Florida. Some of the sensitive environmental conditions, loss of seagrass is a major problem um, in our bays, um, whether it be uh, due to prop scarring or just a shifting of the of the bottom of the of the ocean, um, we have issues at time to time with seagrass and where it pops up and where and and where it um, where it goes away. Um, and like I said, it's a very important substrate for scallops. Uh, increased freshwater when we and I'll have a slide a little bit later that kind of depicts that when we have the rainy season and a lot of stormwater and just rainfall events happen in our bays and the salinity drops. That's a major issue. Um, very scallops are very sensitive to uh, salinity changes, and they need to be living in waters that are 22, 20, uh, I should say 20 parts per thousand um, or better. Um, high turbidity is an issue for scallops. Um, pollutants, you know, you got to be careful. Um, any of these non-point source sort of issues that we have with uh, coastal um, communities around bays where maybe somebody may have accidentally applied too much fertilizer to their lawn and all of a sudden there's a rain event that pushes all this uh, excess fertilizer into the bay and, and causes issues with, uh, with uh, water quality. And of course, red tides. Uh, every once in a while we have an issue with red tides and sometimes that could be spurred on by non-point source issues or it could be a naturally occurring uh, species, algal species that causes the red tide. But those are just some of the issues that can come about uh, with environmental conditions and base scallops. So what does that seagrass habitat look like that uh, the scallops hide out in? For those of you who might not have been able to have a chance to go scalloping, uh, this is what it looks like when the scallops are hiding in those grasses. So they have a, a really good uh, camouflage going on. And as you see them open and close along the edge here, uh, they have about 40, 42 bright blue eyes and they can actually uh, see the light and dark. So this is one way that is, uh, helps them to avoid predators. And unlike oysters, these guys are mobile. So they can use that muscle that you harvest and, and eat to actually open and close their shells and to swim away from you. All right, tasty treat, right? So we know that Scallops need really good water quality, right? But what else, you know, because yeah, we like to eat them, right? So, but there are also predators out there in the marine environment too that <laughs> like, like them just as much or more than we do. So there are some of these usual suspects here that can cause lots of issues with sustaining scallop populations in bays. And here are just some of those um, usual suspects, octopus, conchs, um, even oyster drills that actually drill into the shells and suck the scallop right out. Um, that those are, those are nuisance pests to these scallops. Um, uh, even uh, larger organisms like cow nose rays uh, like to uh, maneuver through these uh, seagrass areas and have a little delicacy. Um, and of course the crabs, uh, the blue crabs, the stone crabs can absolutely just pulverize a scallop shell and, um, and get the meat out. So um, here's just, uh, just a few of those um, uh, usual suspects that go after uh, scallops. So, um, so how do we protect scallops? We know that there are these predators there that really um, cause issues with scallops being able to repopulate the base because if they just drop in numbers because of all these predators. So um, what can we do? How can we keep them healthy, the scallops healthy long enough so they can spawn? Well, FWC had this really great idea to create these predator exclusion cages. Um, so back in 2017, uh, they had this novel idea to really transport some of these scallops into predator exclusion cages and place them in the St. Joe Bay. Um, 
these are these wire cages that you see in these pictures here. Um, so, and, and it, it really was a successful venture and they could really see that it was helping uh, the scallop population. So in 2018, not only did FWC contribute to the effort, but we started our scallop sitter volunteer program um, here over the three counties in, in, the, in the Panhandle. Essentially what happens is uh, volunteers manage these predator exclusion cages um, that are supplied with scallops. So the cages provide a really safe environment for scallops to live and reproduce and in turn repopulate our bays. Uh, as you can see with the, uh, the cages that have like the PVC pipe on each end, on the end, on the corners, I should say, that keeps them off the bottom floor so the crabs can't get to them as well. So, um, and, and the oyster drills and um, some of the other um, uh, creatures there that like to munch on scallops. Um, so that's a good thing. But essentially volunteers, they make monthly visits um, to their assigned cages um, where they clean scallops. Um, they clean off the little algal growth and the barnacles that can attach. Um, one great thing about this project too is the, our scallop sitter volunteers, they, they check the mortality rate, but they also collect some salinity data for us. And they use a hydrometer to do so, a very, very simple device to use, gives us an idea of what the salinity is in that area month to month throughout the project, and whether or not the places that they've, they've located these, uh, these cages are really a prime area for a scallop uh, uh, repopulation. So um, there are docks and bay cages that are, are used in this project. Um, if you have a kayak, uh, you can you know, take your, your cage out in the bay and there's a buoy system for it. But uh, some folks just are lucky enough to have a dock on the bay and they can just tie their uh, cages right there off the bay. Uh, where the, the scallops come from that um, are from FWC that are placed in these cages, well, they're wild caught. Um, and there's a scallop rodeo event that occurs in some counties. And I'll talk about that a little bit later too. Um, here in the Panhandle, um, and we do that, our, we do a scallop rodeo where we have volunteers collect scallops in the bay. They take them back to our hatchery. And that's the brood stock that's used for our scallops that are volunteer program every year. So it's a really nice resource uh, to have. Next slide, please. All right, so in Hernando, we aren't lucky enough to be able to do the dock cages, but we do have uh, the regular cages that you just saw in the previous slide. Um, and we anchor them offshore. So this is what it looks like. And again, like Ray mentioned, they are elevated off the ground to prevent some of those critters from trying to get in and eat those scallops as well as it helps flush that water through. Uh, they are those bivalve filter feeders, so it helps just keep um, them from being covered with sediment and suffocated out. Um, all of our work is done under a permit, so we have our permit marked on our buoys uh, to really help folks know um, that this is a our scallop sitter project and not just a fishing buoy. All right, a little bit more about sitting scallops um, and the process um, that these scallops that are volunteers do, um, which is really an awesome, awesome uh, project here. Uh, they visit the cage monthly to clean and measure salinity, like I spoke about before. If you see over in the, the right-hand side of the slide, there's the uh, hydrometer, um, and it's really just a scoop of just scoop it in the water column and bring it up and hold it up to the light and uh, you get a good uh, indicator of what the salinity measurement is. Um, our volunteers, they submit this data monthly um, through an online form. Um, uh, and all we really need for that form is their name, uh, the date that they took the measurement and took a look at the, uh, had a number for the scallop uh, survival number there. Uh, the salinity, uh, again, the number of live scallops left, and hours volunteered on the project is something new that we're going to do this year. We're trying to get a better idea um, of how many volunteer hours are out there. But um, these trained volunteers, um, like Brittany was talking about, we have to have a, a permit for that. Um, so the cages will have their individual permit numbers, and those permit numbers will be assigned to the volunteer. Next slide, please. 
And then our volunteers share their experience. So we have um, some volunteer groups, um, both Ray's uh, project and mine, where our uh, scallop sitters uh, post updates of what they see, they share their experiences. Um, if they something goes wrong with their cage, it is way for everybody within the group to be able to communicate with each other um, pretty much immediately if you um, are a part of these groups, especially since the babysitting of the scallops, you kind of do on your own time. So it's once a month, it's not a set time where everybody goes out at the same time. So this really just brings the volunteers together. They feel like they're a team and they're a group and they can readily communicate with each other. Uh, so far, um, among the Bay Franklin Gulf and Hernando County scallop sitter programs, we've trained over 132 volunteers who have been participating in the Bay scallop restoration efforts over the last few years. Uh, these sitters have babysat over 4,500 scallops in these predator ex exclusion cages. Um, and one success story that has come out of Hernando is that in our 2021 uh, Bay scallop surveys, we had the highest preseason annual abundance that has been recorded by FWC in over nine years. Uh, and that's just following the first year of our scallop sitter program. And just a couple of slides on some results from the um, Panhandle program. Um, here's a couple of maps here, one for St. Andrews Bay um, over in Panama City and Bay County area. And to the right there is uh, our St. Joseph Bay here in Gulf County. Um, and really, this is just an illustration here of the cages that we had in place um, during the 2018 and 2019 campaign. Um, since cages are generally throughout the entire bay, um, this program really gives us a better understanding of the uh, salinity changes that occur. As you can see, they're pretty well spread out there. Um, gives us an idea of where really the best suitable areas uh, for scallop habitat are and really where we need to focus, you know, year to year on restoration work for scallops. Next slide, please. And just to kind of further illustrate this, this is a couple of maps from uh, St. Joseph Bay back in uh, 2019 too. Um, just to give you an example of how valuable scallops that are, you know, salinity data is to this program. Um, so here's some data from June on the left-hand side and August on the right-hand side. Um, you can take a closer look to the, the dots that are in green are scallops populations that have 15 or more in those cages. Um, but better yet, you can see the differences in the salinities there. The darker the blue, the higher the salinity rate there is. So, um, but you can see how things can shift over time quickly. In Florida, the bulk amount of our rain comes in July, August, and September. So you can see in June when we started the project, yeah, the salinity is very nice uh, throughout the bay there. There's not a lot of area really that's, you know, below 10 parts per, per thousand. But once we start getting the summer rains, you can see in the right-hand map, things change drastically. And this is the kind of information that we use year to year to figure out what are the best areas for scallop populations to thrive. Next slide, please. Okay, so now that we've told you all this really great information about the program, I'm sure everybody is just ready right now to sign up for to be a scallop sitter in our county. So how to you how do you join our panhandle scallop sitter group? Right? That's the that's the million dollar question. Well, how you start with our program is we have a registration link there. I know it's a little lengthy, but that's ufl.pacecommunity.net slash event. Um, and may, we may want to put that in the chat bar. Um, uh, but this is an event site where you can go and you'll see the Gulf County Scallop Center Program um, advertisements. 
uh, the Bay County advertisement and the Franklin County uh, advertisement. So whichever county you're in or you want to uh, volunteer for, uh, that's where you would go. And you have to go into the PACE community software and establish account, which won't take you long, just a minute. And then you can go in and select which county you would like to volunteer for. Um, at that point, um, you'll have, we'll have your, in, your information in the system. We'll have your contact info. We'll have your email address. We will send you a survey uh, through email um, in, the, in the coming weeks um, for some information. There'll be a pre-survey, kind of ask you some questions about what you know about scallops and what you know about the program and some other detailed information for the actual FWC permit that's gonna be need, that we'll need to have to be able to put a permit on your scallop uh, cage, your predator exclusion cage. Um, there will be a virtual training. You'll get a link through email for it um, that you can watch. Uh, and then there'll be a Q&A session and it'll be held in May, um, which will be on Facebook more than likely. And you'll get notification for that as well. Now there are three pickup dates uh, for the scallops and the equipment. And here they are on the screen. Uh, they're gonna be uh, early to mid June. Franklin's is on June 2nd. Uh, Gulf June 9th and Bay on June 16th. They're all Thursdays. These are in-person uh, pickup. Um, so, and we'll send you emails about that too. And the way this will work, it'll be somewhat early morning. Um, we'll actually have an in-person training before you get your scallops in your, uh, in your equipment. Just an in-person training, just so if you have any questions before you go out and place your cages in the bay, that would be a great time. It'd be a great time to interact too with the volunteers and to answer any, any burning questions right there towards the end uh, before we kick things off. So you have ample opportunities there to ask questions and to make sure we have uh, everything set up for a successful campaign this year. Next slide, please. And then if you would like to join the Hernando Scallop Sitters, um, the registration link you'll find here, it is different than the one for race. Um, we will have our uh, training workshop, it will be in person. Uh, we will hold that in June. So I will contact you uh, once we get our permit and everybody is on board. Um, I will then contact you and tell you when uh, the date has been selected for June. And then you will pick up your supplies uh, during that in-person training. Um, from there, it will be your responsibility to go out and collect your scallops um, in our uh, designated waters. You do that starting in June 2022 uh, through August. And then we anchor our cages, cages in August um, based on those salinity requirements that uh, Ray touched upon. Um, in our waters off of Hernando. So look out for that. And um, if you're interested, again, there is a registration link for uh, Hernando Scallop Sitters. And finally, just a, a quick plug about our scallop rodeos um, here. And there we will have one in Gulf County and one in Bay County. Um, this is actually an FWC project. Um, I guess we'll have one in Franklin County too. So what, what happens here is volunteers can collect up to 200 live scallops um, and they'll deliver those to biologists that will have uh, uh, set up like little stations around the bay where they can be taken. Um, so this will be outside of scallop season, okay? This will occur in the month of July. I don't have any, June or July, I don't have any concrete dates on that yet. Um, but there will be um, an advertisement that'll come out if you wanna check our Facebook pages uh, and our websites. Um, but this is through FWC. This is a great way for um, volunteers to have another uh, outlet to um, help us uh, uh, in, in the scallop restoration efforts where they collect scallops, bring them to our, to our FWC biologists who then in turn take these scallops and either use them in predator exclusion cages um, in the bay or uh, or for the scallop sitter project, or actually take some of these back to the hatchery to use for uh, brood stock for next year's scallop sitter program. So it's an awesome way to, um, to uh, again, uh, uh, volunteer for scallop restoration efforts in our area. Next slide, please. Okay. Go ahead, Victor. 
All right, so you should uh, see a poll on your screen. Um, please take a few moments and uh, answer the questions that you see. It really helps us to assess our program here with Bite Size Science. And uh, we thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, here is uh, Ray's contact information again. Here is my contact information again. We're gonna go ahead and leave this poll up for a few more seconds. And I would also like to give a quick shout out to all of our volunteers who help us with uh, the program. Uh, we have, like I said, over 140 volunteers and we also have sponsors that make this program possible. That's awesome, uh, Brittany. Thank you so much, Ray and Britt, for this update on the Scallop Cedar program. Here in Taylor County, scalloping is also a great, a very important economic driver during the, the summer. Well, in all the, the scalloping area from Hernando uh, to, to Gulf County. Um, we're gonna end the poll now. I think we got the input from most of the people. And um, let's, let's go through a couple of questions that went on the chat and remember if you have any other question feel free to put it in the chat and i will ask the um, the presenters so the first one is any plans to start a cedar uh program in pasco county that you know about um <clears throat> our our my permit covers us um, from Homosassa River to Anclote. So if you live anywhere in between that area, um, the main hub is Hernando, but if you are interested in participating, um, that is what my permit covers. Okay. Uh, okay, Jane was asking about to see the 42 eyes that the scallops have, I think Anna, We'll be sharing a picture, and I hope you can see the scallops right, the, the scallop eyes right on the edge. You'll see this blue right eyes. Um, okay, are there any scallops on the east coast, for example, in River County? In Brevard County. I do not believe they are present there now. I don't think so either. I think it's just the Gulf side. Historically, they did kind of pop over on the southern end of Florida, but I don't think they historically were up that far, but I could be wrong. Yeah, as far as base scallops go, I mean, there may be some Calypso scallops offshore, but yeah, base scallops pretty much Gulf of Mexico. That's right, that's right. Okay, I think there is a couple more questions. Uh, uh, Anna was um, sharing in the chat box the links to um, the places where you can uh, register for um, some of the uh, scallop seeder program. There is a picture. Oh, great pick, yeah. Yeah, so you can see, let me see if I can annotate here. Uh, control. So we can see this small eyes right on the edge and then they are located at the bottom and at the top. So in both, uh, along the both shells, right? And when you see them from close, it's, it's really, really interesting to, to see that. Thank you, Laura, for sharing the, the slide with the picture. Uh, I have uh, one question. So, when, for example, when you find mortality in the cages, do you have a plan to restock the those scalps that die in the cage? So you keep the same number along the time. And how long these scalps stay in the scalp cages? Uh, the uh, the predator exclusion cages. Um, for us they keep them caged throughout the end of February. Um, there is mortality. Some of it is due to uh, those critters that Ray talked about like to eat them, but then um, they only live one to two years. So it's not 
unnatural for us to find uh, some dead scallops in let's say October timeframe or again in December because they have spawned um, and then they're at the end of their life. Um, so I'm not sure if Ray restocks his. Um, we don't restock ours. They go and they collect their scallops in the beginning of the season. They report that set number. I'm only allowed to collect so many within our permit. So to make sure that we don't go over that number, um, everybody is allotted to collect so many and that's that for the season. If there is any alive at the end of February, they do go ahead and release those. We bring our cages back in, maintenance them and start over. I don't know, Ray, do you have any different? We don't. We don't restock, um, and that's a little bit of a bummer too. Because there, are, every year we have, we'll have a handful of um, volunteers that lose all of their scallops in the first month, um, just because um, they're placed in an area, the cages are placed in a new area, um, and the water quality, the salinity level, may be right on par at the time, but soon after it drops and then there's just a total loss. Um, we really hate that, but it happens from time to time. As far as the longevity of the scallops making it um, for the most part over the season, we, um, this year, it depends on the year, it depends on the, you know, the weather patterns, the rainfall that we have and where the cages are ultimately placed. But um, we've had years when, you know, by November, um, there weren't any scallops left. This year, we had Franklin and Gulf County that had scallops um, until January, and that's when we released ours. So that was really nice to see. We've had some, uh, we've certainly had some um, hurdles uh, in Bay County from time to time, uh, just because of the influx of fresh water in some areas. And there's been um, some pretty heavy losses there. And there has in the other two counties too, from time to time. But um, that's just something that we battle with and just to try to, you know, we're still, we're learning, uh, trying to find um, the, the best areas for these um, scallop populations to really take hold. Good, awesome, uh, Ray. There, there is a good question uh, by Mark. He asked, did the 2021 red tie event have an effect on scallop population in Hernando County? Uh, we don't know that, so or we don't know yet. We did uh, post-season surveys in October. So within Fernando, we have volunteers that are also scallop sitters that they do um, underwater dive surveys in May and June before the recreational season opens. Uh, they do it again in October after the season closes. And so we'll get a better handle on if maybe red tide did affect the population when we do our uh, dive surveys again uh, this May and June to kind of compare what's been going on over uh, the past year. So we don't know yet. Good, yeah, let's hope it does not, right? But especially we're trying to recover the population and these water quality issues usually have a, a great impact. So let's hope uh, the population that that's good. I have a final question and is uh, have you have to deal with vandalizing the cages like sometimes you go and they're just gone because someone just took the cage with the scallops or or lost it because of their uh, extreme weather event or something? Yeah I can uh, I can uh, speak to that. Uh, during uh, for our 2018 campaign when Hurricane Michael hit, um, that was basically a wash. Um, we lost everything um, that year uh, due to the storm. Um, so that was um, a little bit of a bummer. But yeah, that's an excellent question to bring up about poaching. We have issues with poaching every year. Even though there's a FWC permit uh, attached to these cages, we either lose cages because people just pick them up out of the bay or they see that they have scallops in them and they just take them out of the cage. Um, so we do have issues with poaching and if we have um, you know, sus a suspected uh, poaching event that does happen, we uh, alert FWC, our, our FWC biologists who then in turn um, turn that over to uh, FWC law enforcement um, 
for investigation. And because, you know, these cages with these permits on them are actually, um, you know, this is state property, so it's technically a felony um, if you just, you know, if you were to steal one of these cages. So, but we, yeah, but to answer your question, yeah, we do have a certain percentage of poaching uh, every year, um, which is a disappointment, but yes. Yeah, yeah, we need to keep people informed. Uh, Brittany, you want to say something? I was just saying, unfortunately, we, we see the same here too. Yeah, well, that's not a shame. We need people to be, be more involved of these efforts. I don't see more questions going through the chat. So it's 1.10 and we want to be stay on time. Uh, I want to thank again, Brittany and Ray for this uh, really interesting presentation. And we invite you all for our next uh, Bite Side Science uh, episode three, which is taking place next month. Uh, and we're gonna have our peer, Rick Connor, talking about the Panhandle Terrapin project, which is uh, another inter very interesting uh, citizen science program. Remember all the uh, citizen science series this year are gonna be related to citizen science or the bite science uh, series are going to be related to citizen science program. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us today and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Thank you.